that time of year to be talking about enriched strips. So today what I'm going to do is line out the hows, whats, whens, and whys of using an enriched strip and what they are. You know, I've talked many times throughout the years about using the nitrogen rich strip or the enriched strip in a, in a field to help better estimate uh, the nitrogen needs and when you need to be applying the enriched strip. The what's behind an enriched strip is it is a, a area in the field that has a high rate of nitrogen. Typically in winter wheat or winter canola that's going to grain only, that's going to be about 40 or 50 pounds of N above what the rest of the field is. It's just a strip. If you can imagine, it, it's a, a large area, it's an area of the field that you have overlapped and made larger. So throughout the years, if you've seen the overlaps where, where nitrogen application was doubled up or even gaps, this, we're making that larger. Or in many of the fields, you've heard me talk about cowpox. Those little round spots showing up in the fields, an enriched strip is a larger version of that. So we put these heavier rates of nitrogen out in the field at planting time and watch it through the season to better predict and better estimate the need for nitrogen going throughout the year. We use this enriched strip as a piece of litmus paper, you might say, in a, in a field. We're going to watch it during the year. If it shows up, where if that strip of nitrogen shows up in the field greener than everything else, we know it's time to apply nitrogen. We can then bring a sensor into the, into the system and take some readings and go into an online calculator, which we'll talk about later, and actually give a recommended rate for both winter wheat and winter canola in Oklahoma. When we're applying enriched strips, we have a couple of variables we should think about. The first is, what am I going to use? Uh, commonly, people are using their pre-plant applicators, whether that's an anhydrous applicator, uh, a liquid rig, or a dry spinner spreader. And easily enough, you can just double up. Let's say you're applying 40 pounds of nitrogen to the field with an anhydrous applicator. You just make a second pass over an area and bring that up to 80, and you have your enriched strip. Uh, many people also will go to the co-op and rent a urea spreader for a day and run over their fields, just a single pass over the field, applying 40 to 60 pounds of nitrogen across all their fields and, and getting it done. Another option for an enriched strip applicator is using a four-wheeler ATV or UTV with a liquid tank on the back. Many people will use a 10-foot boom and use streamer nozzles to direct the nitrogen into the soil or in through the residue. And that rate, again, is usually 15 to 25 gallons of UAN per acre to get that optimum rate out there. The strips, I like to say, should be at least 10 foot wide, which is, would be the size of the applicator we'd use for a UTV or ATV, up to however wide you want to apply. There's no real need to go up above 60 foot unless your applicator just has to, do the, has to be that width. Uh, I would recommend if you're using a liquid applicator, a sprayer, or uh, that you might just run center section just to reduce the total nitrogen you apply across your fields. So if you have a 90 foot sprayer, just run the center 30 section of the boom and you have an enriched strip wide enough. On the length of that, I'd like to at least see 100 paces across the field. So, you know, a good football length across the field. The more variable a field is, the longer the strip should be. So you can see that variability as it goes. If you go from a good area to a poor area or from a bottom ground to a side slope, if you have a very hom homogeneous field or a field that has one soil type and you're basically cutting the same grain across the field, you can shorten it up. When you have multiple soil types in the field or a larger field, many producers are breaking it into multiple enriched strips. So you may have a small one on the, the south end and a small one on the north end so you can look at both areas and make judgment calls on that. Source is not that important as long as you're getting the nitrogen source into the ground. If you're using liquid, Either apply it via coulter or streamer nozzle. Uh, if you're on stubble, the streamer nozzle will help push that liquid into the soil. And a flat fan on no-till would typically get tied up in residue and you couldn't necessarily account for that. Urea, the same goes for urea. If you can get it into the soil, the better. So uh, you know, apply it and work it in in cultivated ground or apply it and hope for a rainfall in, in no-till ground. And hydrous application, you would just typically use your normal practices with anhydrous just make sure you have enough down. The timing of the enriched strip should be sometime pre-plant to about 30 days after planting in winter wheat and winter canola. We have a plenty of time through the fall and winter for that nitrogen to get into the system and the plant to utilize it. And so we, we focus on that, that fall application now up to after planting, ideally in wheat. 
once you get into late mid to late November, it's getting a little late. That doesn't mean not to apply, but you're 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 running the risk of that nitrogen not being taken up or having already occurred some deficiencies in the plant. So we'd like to get it on earlier than later. So you can still use the nitrogen rich strip with dual purpose or even graze out wheat. Uh, one of the adjustments you'd make with dual purpose or graze out is a higher upfront rate. The grain only rate would be 40 to 50 pounds of nitrogen, but since we're pulling off forage and, and hopefully a great deal of forage, we would have to up that enriched strip rate to 100 pounds or better to make sure there's enough in and you don't go deficient. When you're grazing and going to a dual purpose graze and grain, you need to pull off the cattle about a week before application. We need time for that enriched strip to recover. Some people decide not to pull off because they want that the cattle out there as long as possible, so you can enclose around the enriched strip. Get, a, get an enclosure, a, a hay ring in the strip and one outside of the strip uh, is good enough and let that be out there for a week. It needs to be grazed throughout the most of the season, but it needs a week of recovery. That, 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 that forage has to recover. Uh, for graze out, uh, there are people that use the enriched strip for, for graze out and they just watch it much like a forage system. We can still take the readings with the sensor, we can still make a rate recommendation, but I highly recommend to contact the county educator and myself as the rates will need to be slightly adjusted in a graze out condition. With the nitrogen rich strip, it, it's one of those techniques, applications, technologies that I say is should be in every single field every year whether you use the sensor or not. You can put an enriched strip out, it's quite easy, producers can do it over a large amount of acres in a very short period of time and just watch as the season goes. If you see the enriched strip you know it's time to fertilize. The rest of the strip field is behind and it needs fertilizer. If you don't see the strip throughout the year it's a judgment call at that point. You can either keep waiting, see if the strip will develop and not apply as, as the recommendation would be or if you think the prices of fertilizer and grain calls for it, still put some down, but maybe apply a reduced rate as the, your, the strips are showing you don't need as much as you typically would. The enriched strip alone can account for many dollars of savings, whether in saving in nitrogen cost and application or increasing grain yield in those years that our yield potential is higher and the nitrogen need is also higher.